I think that was a trial balloon, the um, Swiss proposal. It's nonsense, of course. The EU has no interest in a Swiss-style arrangement with the United Kingdom. They consider it um, cumbersome, uh, unwieldy, um, and not particularly favourable to themselves. So they will have nothing to do with it. We will have another referendum in this decade um, under a Labour government, whether it's the first or second Labour government, we we don't know. Um, And then uh, at that stage, It will probably not be an enormously controversial issue that we should rejoin the European Union. Um, Brexit will end not with a bang, but with a whimper. Brendan, we've had quite a a week because there's been a tremendous change in the public mood about Brexit, it seems. There's now a significant majority in opinion polls suggesting that people think Brexit isn't working. And this seems to flow from the catastrophe of the um, market route that followed the mini budget of um, Ms. Truss and uh, Mr. Kwarteng. And then the full details of the repair job done by Chancellor Hunt, um, which has led to really a very dark prognosis for the UK economy and a number of very significant commentators, the former governor of the Bank of England and the former chief economic advisor to the Bank of England, both said that Brexit is essentially a a failure and must be reversed. Uh, Will this feed through, do you think, to what the government does? I mean, there have been some indications that a softer line is being taken by Mr. Sunak. Uh, We've even had rumours which he's denied, that the government is thinking of moving towards a Swiss-style deal of getting closer to the EU. Where do you think this is all going? I think that was a trial balloon, the um, Swiss proposal. It's nonsense, of course. The EU has no interest in a Swiss-style arrangement with the United Kingdom. They consider it um, cumbersome, uh, unwieldy, um, and not particularly favourable to themselves. So they will have nothing to do with it. Um, But uh, I suspect there are people in Number 10 and in the Foreign Office who think that just because the British uh, this time, this week, uh, would like a Swiss start arrangement with the European Union, the European Union will will wish to uh, accommodate the wishes coming from Downing Street. I think think that's a fantasy, like so much in Brexit. Uh, But I I think it is significant politically um, that the government uh, are realising that they don't want themselves and their party to be too absolutely tarred tarred with the Brexit brush um, because it's going entirely in the wrong direction. um, And they'd like to to emancipate themselves from the identification with it. I, I think it's much too late. And I think that even if there were some serious negotiation along the lines of a Switzerland style of arrangement, uh, the ERG wouldn't wouldn't wear it. So we've already had Liam Fox saying that he was very much against the idea of a Swiss similar Swiss style arrangement. Uh, and I think that would be the orthodox view of, of most of the um, uh, extreme Eurosceptics who are now the mainstream of the Conservative Party. In his denial of uh, the Swiss ne- Uh, plans. Uh, Mr. Sunak said that there would be no question of the EU having any authority over the UK. Now, this raises an obvious problem for the most immediate question facing uh, the UK in its negotiations with the EU, which is obviously the Northern Ireland Protocol, because it seems to be inconceivable that that can be resolved without conceding some role for the European Court of Justice adjudicating the single market arrangements that prevail in Northern Ireland. That's absolutely right. I can't see any resolution of this conundrum. Uh, On the technical side, there are always ways in which um, uh, the blow can be softened, the um, clarity of the situation can be obscured and fudged. But this is something which is so clearly spelled out in uh, in the protocol the role particularly of the ECJ, uh, that the, the EU are, are simply not going to resile from it. Um, they regard the, um, the agree- agreement and the protocol uh, uh, as being a package. 
and, and an important, perhaps a central part of the package for them, uh, was the role of the ECJ. So there's a little bit of um, uh, of time, of extra time for this to be resolved, um, given that the elections are likely to be postponed. Um, but I, I, I can't see any way in which the ERG would, would ever tolerate uh, the involvement, this um, very direct involvement of the ECJ uh, in the, the interpretation and the implementation of the protocol. And yet the absence of a uh, resolution of the protocol is clearly going to lead to a crisis in relation to the United States. I mean, it seems that President Biden made clear to uh, Mr. Sunak in Bali that he was expecting the protocol issue to be resolved by the anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement next Easter. And on top of that, it will make relations economically with the EU much more difficult. I mean, there's a risk of trade sanctions being imposed if this crisis continues. And the whole rationale of this situation, presumably of wanting a softer line, is precisely the economic difficulties which we're in, which the latest uh, budget has been trying to resolve. So there seems to be a clash coming there's certainly a clash coming, but I think for Sunak to have a have a sufficient weight on the economic arguments to ram this through, even against the ERG inside the Conservative Party. Uh, I'm not convinced of that. I, I think uh, my remark a moment ago that the ERG <laughs> and the mainstream of the Conservative Party um, is is absolutely central to all this. Uh, there's been a, a certain wistful melancholic note creeping into the remarks of conservative uh, ministers over the past um, 10 days, even the past fortnight. Um, they seem to realise that the, the, the case for Brexit uh, is looking ever more threadbare. We had the extraordinary remarks from George Eustace um, disavowing the um, trade agreement with Australia that he was uh, supported when he was in government. And um, Jeremy Hunt um, had a, 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 an extraordinary uh, admission um, that the best he could see about the future of um, trade relations with the European Union um, was that over the years, most of the friction caused by Brexit uh, would be negotiated away. And that's like, in, in my view, cutting off your arm and hoping that in 20 years' time, there'll be a, a good prosthetic which will be able to, to replace the functions of, of your arm. Uh, I think that both Hunt and Sunak um, simply are in the position of, of, the, of the woman tied to the train rails as the express bears down on them. I, I'm sure they'd like to find a way of, um, of placating the Americans. They'd like to find a way of having a better relationship with the EU, even if their current views about how that would work out are, are unrealistic. But I, I'm sure that's the direction they'd like to go. But I'm, I'm equally sure that their, their party simply won't allow them to do it. Where is the opposition in all this? I mean, why have we not seen um, Keir Starmer taking a more positive line on Europe, given the shift in public opinion? I think he, um, uh, with his considerable caution and prudence, um, hasn't yet understood the shift, the rapid shift which is taking place in public opinion. Uh, we all know that the reason why he um, disavowed uh, uh, the reversal of Brexit and came up with this nonsense about Brexit being made to work was that he thought that there was a, a tranche of voters um, who were historic Labour voters, but who'd been alienated by the um, support for the EU and support for rejoining that he himself had manifested. Um, and he wanted to, to throw them a very substantial bone. Uh, I didn't think that that's um, necessary anymore, if it ever was. Uh, but I am encouraged by his remarks about reforming the House of Lords. I don't think he would have said that a year ago. I think that in a year ago, he would have thought that form of the House of Lords uh, was a Jeremy Corbyn theme, which he didn't want to, want to be associated with. So perhaps he's becoming a, a little bolder. Uh, I can see that a, a natural next step port of call for him uh, after this um, uh, tip, tipping, putting his foot into the water of Lord's reform might be proportional representation. Uh, we, you and I, and lots of other people have been very disappointed uh, about the negative and um, rather um, in incoherent views of Europe that 
Starmer has put forward over the past year. Um, but it may well be that um, come another year, uh, the force of public opinion will be such uh, that he won't be able to stick on this um, negative m minimalist view. He'll, he'll be forced by public opinion um, to um, say more about Europe. It, it's not a very pleasant commentary on our country that we have political leaders who wait upon public opinion rather than try and sh lead it. But I, I'm afraid that's the way it is. Coming back to the Conservative Party, I, I, you think that there's going to be a confrontation of some kind over the Northern Ireland Protocol with the ERG. Uh, I mean, that some sort of clash does seem to be coming there, um, which you suppose that um, the Prime Minister will withdraw from, won't be able to cut a deal in Northern Ireland. How much of a factor is fear that there could be a split in the Conservative Party, that um, forces around Nigel Farage and others in the Reform Party could constitute a, an alternative pole of attraction at the next general election and that the Conservative Party could actually disintegrate in these circumstances. It will soon act last to, as most people are, have been thinking, that given the economic circumstances, uh, he must take this parliament to as long as it can. We're having a general election in late 2024 or even January 2025. Uh, he might well hope that. Whether he'll succeed is another issue, uh, because I, I personally think that the dilemmas which we've been sketching, particularly Northern Ireland Protocol, uh, are so intractable um, that it might be that the only psychological and political way out he can find uh, is to call for an election. And I think that uh, it might well be that the new monarch um, took the view that in the um, the the impasse which British politics seems to be steering towards in the in the next 12 months, uh, that a, an election was the appropriate thing to do. Uh, I agree that one of the factors weighing with Sunak is fear uh, of the dis dissolution of the Conservative Party, but then that's always been a, a major factor in the um, Conservative approach to Brexit and to the European Union. There's always been this fear that um, UKIP and its new reincarnation now um, would make the Conservative Party unelectable. Uh, and that fear hasn't gone away. There were some rumours before um, Sunak took over the premiership, when there was still a prospect of Boris Johnson attempting a return or even it going to the membership if um, um, Miss Mordaunt had remained in the race, that there would have been a split from the uh, the left of the Conservative Party, what's, what's left of it. Um, and what are the prospects of that, do you think, in these circumstances, that um, there will be a body of people, including perhaps um, Mr Hunt, who really know in their hearts that Brexit has been a disaster, were not in favour of it at the time. I mean, he seems to be potentially in a very powerful position. I mean, given the fact that Keir Starmer hasn't been prepared to say that Brexit should be reversed, that the Liberal Democrats haven't been prepared to say that Brexit should be reversed. And there is a huge gap in British politics for someone to say that Brexit should be reversed. And is it conceivable that that could come from a, a Conservative split? I mean, if Hunt were, for example, to resign now, say Brexit is a, has been a disaster and should be reversed, that would make a huge impact. I He'd agree with a very make a huge impact. Position. But, but uh, I think the likelihood of it happening is, is, is pretty pretty small. Can, can I just say one thing about the Liberal Democrats? They, yeah. they do say Brexit should be reversed. It, it's just not yet. It's a very Augustinian approach to these things. Um, they, they, they want it to happen at some point in, in the rather dim and distant future. Um, but I, I think the, the, the besetting problem of the Conservative Party over the past 20 years, as far as Europe has being concerned, is that what you might call the one nation tradition, the left of the Conservative Party, uh, the moderates of the Conservative Party, call them what you like, uh, have always put uh, unity of the Conservative Party uh, above the nature of policy. And that's created an asymmetrical position when the Eurosceptic said uh, the Conservative Party is only going to be united on our terms. And if it's disunited, well, well tough. 
whereas the, um, the, the, the left of the party uh, have always found a, a reason for thinking that if they just keep quiet now, if they let things take their course, um, they will get back to a, a more even keel and the unity of the Conservative Party can be preserved. Uh, it, it may be, of course, that, um, that this time it will be different, uh, but there's a, a lot of history of the, of the left of the Conservative Party um, acquiescing in things that they claim they would never acquiesce in. Yes, that is sadly the case. I mean, it is nevertheless extraordinary that we don't have any major figures calling for uh, reversing Brexit at the moment. We have we have Lord Heselton. Right? Well, Michael Heselton, right, yes, but only we have no one in, in in a position of power or in potential position of power to do that. Whereas one would have thought that this was the single largest gap currently existing in in British politics. One point I would make is that those people who think it was a mistake don't necessarily now think that uh, it ought to be reversed. I, I think that that's a, another step in the argument, which certainly people are, are moving towards, but I, I don't think they're there yet. Um, my own view is that we will have a, another referendum in this decade um, under a Labour government, whether it's a first or second Labour government, we, 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 we don't know. Um, and then uh, at that stage, it will probably not be an enormously controversial issue that we should rejoin the European Union. Um, Brexit will end not with a bang, but with a whimper. Well, we'll see. Many thanks, Brendan, for this. Um, we will continue this discussion in due course. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this latest video. It's one of a series of videos about Europe, about Brexit, and about the future of the European Union. Uh, from the Federal Trust. Uh, we hope that you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel and then you'll have notifications of future videos, which I hope you'll enjoy uh, as much as perhaps you enjoyed this one.